What's going on everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. The subscriber players are taking over this league and I absolutely love it. We are now up to 20 subscriber players in the league. Thank you guys so much for the interest in the series. Thank you for all the comments below. I am having a blast watching you guys play in the SFL. And if this is your first time watching an SFL video, let me just tell you a little bit about what we got going on here because you may want to join the league as well. So we, I, we, we relocated all 32 teams in the NFL and did a fantasy draft so all the players in the league are mixed around on random teams and i am also allowing subscriber players to join this league as well so if you would like to join like the players that i'm about to showcase here in a moment all you gotta do is leave your info in the comments i'll have a nice little template pinned down there with the info that i need and you can see your player in this league on the next episode also i am playing as the toronto thunderbirds here in the afc east two and one by the way on the season just saying but let me show you guys who we got so far in the league and showcase some of these players so we are starting out with mr eli sakowitz free safety for the canton condors over in the afc north eli is a six foot 205 pound receiver out of the university of delaware next we got mike Cox Small, who is actually on our team, Toronto Thunderbirds. Mike is a five foot eleven receiver, 192 pounds out of the U, and he is also in obviously the AFC East, just like us. Nick Stoyer, wide receiver on the San Juan Tigers, who have been a very popular team. I have uh, three subscribers on that team now, so lots of fellow subscriber teammates. Nick is a six foot two, 185 pound receiver out of the. Ohio State University on the San Juan Tigers in the NFC South. Arturo Esquivel, linebacker for the Albuquerque Armadillos. Arturo is a six foot one, 210 pound linebacker out of, it says New Mexico, but it's actually the Universidad de Sonoro. He is in the AFC West. First linebacker to join the league. Arturo is a force over there on the Armadillos. Next we have James Briner, tight end on the Austin Lumberjacks over in our division, again, the AFC East. James is a six foot three, 235 pound tight end out of a UNC. Next on the list here, we got Yeezy Fuentes, wide receiver for the Virginia Beach Blues in the NFC South. Yeezy is a six foot one, 180 pound receiver out of Oregon. And he's, I think, the only team on the Blues so far. So if you want to be a teammate of Yeezy here and join the Virginia Beach Blues, we got spots available for you. Michael Yakin is next here, QB for the Austin Lumberjacks. So teammate of the tight end, James Briner. Michael is killing it on his stats this season. I've been tracking him episode to episode. He is doing a very good job. Michael is a six foot one, 198 pound QB out of the University of Oklahoma. Shout out Jack Mavros, the first and so far only punter here in the SFL. Love to see a punter or kicker get added to the league. Jack is punting the ball on the Honolulu Dragons in the NFC West. He is a 5'11", 177 punter out of Washington. Jesse Buzo Jr., QB for the Dublin Shamrocks, who we just played last episode. We did win that game, but Jesse here did definitely give us a run for our money, and he played very, very great in that game. So Jesse is a 6'1", 210-pound QB out of Texas, playing on the Dublin Shamrocks over in the NFC East. Caleb Hayes, wide receiver on the Paris Black Knights over in the NFC North, formerly the Packers, who is my favorite team, so I love this team already. Caleb here is a six foot, 201 pound wide receiver out of Georgia. Another tight end here, Bjorn Jeffrey, teammate of Arturo Esquivel over on the Albuquerque Armadillos. Bjorn is a six foot five, 215 pound tight end out of Colorado. Another linebacker here, Michael Briner and first sibling subscriber duo, brother of James Briner, tight end on the Lumberjacks. Michael here plays for the Oakland Wizards in the AFC West, formerly the Raiders. And Michael is a six foot tall, 225 pound linebacker out of North Carolina. We also have some new subscribers who are joining the SFL for the first time in this episode here. First, we have St. James, who is a tight end here playing. that shows him on the roster behind Dalton Kincaid. But St. James here will be actually tight end number one 
on the San Juan Tigers. So shout out to at Neverland Production X in the comments. St. James is a six foot two, 225 star development tight end, 24 years old out of Penn State. And he looks to be a pretty balanced tight end. Definitely can catch the ball. He can run some routes. He can also throw some blocking down there on field. So apparently stats were good enough to beat out Dalton Kincaid on the depth chart. And we actually play the San Juan Tigers in week eight. So we got St. James here, Nick Stoyer, the wide receiver, and another subscriber that I will show you here in a moment. But week eight, we will be playing numerous different subscribers. So I am definitely looking forward to that, of course. And then we have our first cornerback to join the league. The league. We have Mr. Dior Love here, six foot three, 210 pounds out of Mississippi State. And Dior is very fast with the 94 speed, 94 XL. Pretty good man coverage as well. Not the best in zone, but he looks like he could lock you down in man coverage. And he's definitely not going to be getting burned too often on the routes. Having that pretty electric speed. So welcome to the San Juan Tigers, St. James and Dior Love. Dior Love, shout out at Kendrick Jefferson in the comments. Welcome to the SFL. Another sibling subscriber duo. I always love to see it. We got Jaden Hayes here, rookie out of Georgia, who is the brother of Caleb Hayes. Also rookies out of Georgia. So how about that? Brothers went to the same college and then they got drafted by the same SFL team. So isn't that awesome? So Jaden beat out Mac Jones no, and uh, David Blau. No surprise there. Jaden is a 78 overall star development quarterback, six foot one, 200 pounds out of Georgia. And in terms of his ratings here, he's pretty solid overall. He's got decent throw power, very good deep accuracy, very good short accuracy. He can throw on the run, do all those types of things. And not, not any set of wheels on him by any stretch of the imagination, but a respectable 83 speed and an 88 excel. So welcome to the league, Jaden, and hope that you excel with your brother Caleb on the Paris Black Knights. Another new QB here, this time in the NFC West, over on the Sacramento Sentinels, we have my man Rocky DiBernardo. Shout out at Red Zone Rocky in the comments. And make sure you go check out my man's YouTube channel, at Red Zone Rocky. This dude is on fire. He's got like 11K subs and he posts all kinds of Madden tips, tricks. So if you're looking to improve your game, he posts a lot of schemes, defensive and offensive schemes. So go check my man's YouTube channel out. It is pretty darn fire. But Rocky here is a 5'10", 197 pound QB out of the University of Florida. Star development, of course, as I make all my subscriber players star. And he looks like a pretty solid QB too. 91 throw power. Pretty accurate, especially uh, in the short accuracy. Deep accuracy could be a little bit better, but he makes up for that with amazing throw on the run. Pretty decent play action as well. And 94 speed. Watch out. If my man gets out of the pocket, he can definitely fly. So more of a scrambler type archetype, but I would watch out for Rocky here because he could be a dominant force here in the SFL. First running back of the league, very surprised, uh, Johnny Waters here, rookie out of UCLA on the Orlando Orbits, who we play next week. So you're not going to want to miss that game at all. We'll be taking on a subscriber next week. Johnny here. Playing behind Jonathan Taylor, but no worries. I made sure to work you into tons of formations. And let's be honest, when you got Jonathan Taylor on your team, it's going to be hard to start over him. But Johnny here could be well on his way as he is only 23 years old, 5'11", 240 pounds. So a power back kind of reminds me of like a AJ Dillon type out of UCLA. And Johnny here is, he's a powerful powerful individual with 90 trucking to go along with 90 speed and a 93 break tackle so linebackers out there good luck bringing my man down you're gonna have some trouble with that and johnny could be a staple here in the sfl already the 19th ranked halfback in the league and again we take the orbits on next week so shout shout out at johnny waters 6091 in the comments Welcome to the SFL, brother. Canton Condors becoming a pretty popular team, too. The Condors and the Tigers each have three players, but we got strong safety Mike Collins to go along with another subscriber paired in the secondary Eli Sakowitz. So subscriber duos here in the safety position for the Condors. Mike Collins is 5'11", 206 pounds out of Rutgers and modeled him after the Packers legend, 
per your request. Nick Collins even gave you the same number, 36, so you gotta love to see that. But Mike here is star development as well, and he's pretty fast, got really, really good zone coverage, decent tackler, nothing crazy, but he also has 87 catching. So basically, if he's playing zone back there, probably going to be throwing some picks. If you're playing the Condors, I would not be surprised at all. And then Braden Keys, wide receiver on the Condors as well. Shout out at Rez.Covarez in the comments here. Braden is going to be paired along with two other subscribers as well. He is six foot three, 210 pounds out of LSU. And let me just tell you, this man can fly. 98 speed to go along with 85 deep route is a very, very lethal combination as well. Third on the depth chart behind Drake London and Michael Pittman. But again, worked you into tons of sets. So I would imagine you will be getting a plethora of targets. And who's your guys' quarterback on the Condors? It is Jared Goff. So respectable quarterback. I am sure that you will be racking up the yards and the receptions with the best of them. And last but not least, new QB in town for the Brooklyn Nighthawks, who is, that's a team in our division too. So we will see uh, Derek Daragosa, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, two times per year, starting over an aging Aaron Rodgers. They said, look, Aaron, you tried to come back from that uh, torn Achilles. It's not working. So we had to bring in my man, Derek. Uh Got some good options to throw the ball to as well. Jamar Chase, Adam Thielen, Michael Thomas. So no shortage of weapons there. And Derek is a two-year pro out of Indiana. 6'3", 190-pound star dev as always. Very accurate quarterback. 84 deep accuracy, 83 medium to go along with 88 short and a respectable throw power at 91. Not the fastest QB, more of a uh, pocket passer, if you will. But looking forward to, not sure when we play the Nighthawks, but we will play them two times per year. And looking forward to seeing Derek here live in action. And again, if I missed anybody in this episode, I'm trying to keep up with the comments. You guys are killing it. Pour in the comments in left and right. If I did miss somebody, let me know. I sincerely apologize. And I will make sure to add you into the next episode. Second on the Melbourne Dreadnoughts today. A couple two and one division foes going at it. No subscribers on the Dreadnoughts yet. So if you would like to join that team and play me two times per year, two, per, two times per season, there are spots open. They got Bryce Young and Hannon Hooker as their quarterbacks. Couple of rooks back there. Devin Singletary and Jamal Williams. So, okay, running back room. Alex Ingold, the fullback. And then receivers, they got some talent. They got Jalen Waddle. They got Odell, Robert Woods, but he's hurt. Robbie Chosen Anderson and John Mechie. So some decent options at the receiver position. Tyler Higby and Harrison Bryant from my uh, Cleveland Browns. Former Mackey Award winner is the tight ends. DJ Humphrey, left tackle. Anthony Bradford, left guard. Not too good on the left side. Frank Ragnow, though, very good center. Chris Lindstrom, very good guard. So they're right side. Minus Terrence Steele. Right side, middle side, middle, middle, middle side. Is that a thing? I don't think the middle is a side. Their offensive line is okay, is what I'm trying to say. Taekwon Lewis out of the Ohio State University is the left end. Jonathan Grenard, very good. Up and coming uh, right end. Derek Anadi's hurt. So John Jenkins, Marvin Wilson. Their D-line is okay. Linebacker rooms, they got Jonathan Cooper out of Ohio State. Patrick Queen, very good middle linebacker. Ivan Pace, the rookie, is also there as well. And Alex Highsmith. So linebackers are decent. And then PS2 is going to be probably picking me off three times today. I would imagine Avante Maddox, not bad either. Marcus Jones not playing, so Michael Davis. Cornerbacks are pretty good. Xavier McKinney, the free safety. Kyle Duggar, the strong safety. So really, actually, I would say a good secondary overall. Cam Dicker, Dicker the kicker, is here. And then Logan Cook is punting the ball away. So we are going to go ahead and dive into gameplay here, guys. Uh, two and one on the season looking to make it three and one and we are taking on a division rival in the melbourne dreadnought so if you guys are excited for more sfl content and you guys are liking this series so far please leave a like subscribe and if you want to join the sfl comment your player details below without further ado let's get down to toronto thunderbirds field in toronto canada and get ready for the game melbourne dreadnoughts formerly the miami dolphins we are of course formerly the buffalo bills 
And we are going to start on offense first in our all red uniforms. There is Patrick Peterson trying to get a good return and definitely not being successful. Now, our quarterback, if you didn't know, is quarterback of my favorite team, Jordan Love. And let me tell you what, Love leads the SFL in total yards. Touchdown interception ratio, not very good. But the reason why he hasn't slung more touchdowns is because of this guy that you are about to see get the ball right now. Kyron Williams. Kyron has been absolutely explosive for us, going over 100 yards in multiple weeks and pretty much being the main focal point of our offense. As wow. you see here on your screen last week, 111 yards and four touchdowns. He has, I think, eight combined touchdowns over the last two weeks. So Kyron is just playing like a man possessed. But this time we are going to come out empty with a couple drags materializing downfield. And Kyron Williams not getting it done or not coming out of the backfield. Instead being used as a receiver, picking up 10 and also a first down. Coach Damon Sanders says, let's go screen pass to Kyron Williams. Why not? I just said, oh, heavy pressure Ooh. instantly. Somehow Kyron did catch that, but it was maybe better if he dropped it as we had Jonathan Grenard. Uh, just absolutely screaming into the backfield there. So that one was a bit dangerous. And we end up losing four yards as a result. Now, the Dreadnoughts are showing double A gaps, but I'll bet you it's not pressure. It's not. And we have a wide open. Is that MVS? It is. Marquez Valdez Scantling, who's been a really big focal point of our offense as well. No, he had some case of the drop season in real life. He hasn't been dropping too many passes for us. He has been catching it and catching it at a high level. Picks up a big, big gainer on that one. And now we are into uh, Dreadnought's territory here. So let's see if we can maybe kick this thing outside with Kyron. If we get a couple blocks, we do. I tried to juke back over to the right, but I think Kyron got caught up on maybe his own offensive lineman. Chris Olave getting doubled over there on the left side. So very interesting there but I see our tight end Waller Darren Waller catching a nice touch pass from Jordan Love who I'm gonna probably talk about this every episode because I'm a huge huge Packers fan but if you haven't watched Jordan Love's game last season watch him I'm telling you quote me on it now this dude could be the future of the NFL and hope he's definitely a uh, future of the SFL as he is our quarterback of course Kyron going to push the pile forward for a small gain of three. I'm trying to get Olave involved. He really hasn't. You would be surprised. He's our uh, wide receiver number one, but he really hasn't got involved too much. He had a big catch for like 50 something yards last week. But aside from that, hasn't really done too much. So third and seven here. Let's uh, see if we can get this into the end zone, boys. I think it's Waller. Perfect ball placement from Jordan Love, a.k.a. C.J. Smalls on that one, because obviously I'm controlling Jordan Love. And Darren Waller going to strike first blood here for the Toronto T-Birds. Now, the T-Birds are the highest rated team in the SFL, and I take a lot of credit for that because I did the fantasy draft. I drafted for this team, and they ended up being the highest rated overall team. And I got to say, I am really enjoying playing for them, as you see you can tell who our kicker is. Texas Longhorn and NFL legend Justin Tucker. Best in the business. Booting this thing to the Dreadnoughts for their opening possession. What's Bryce Young up to in Melbourne? Uh, not too much, really. More picks than touchdowns. Opposite of what Jordan Love's touchdown interception ratio is. And I am hoping to make that just a little bit worse today. So I am going to start out aggressive. And going to be sending a little bit of pressure here at Bryce Young. Make him think about it. Or it's just going to be a pick from DJ Reed Jr. What was I just talking about? Perfect timing user pick for DJ Reed, the five-year pro out of Kansas State. Haven't called his name yet so far in this season. It's been Patrick Peterson, Marcus Peters, some of the big names that we have back there in the secondary. And I don't know what Bryce Young saw on that play. He was seeing ghost Sam Darnold style because he basically threw it right into the good old bread basket of DJ Reed. So that what a way for our defense to start. Love to see it. Let's go to Kyron. Need some yards, Kyron. There's a small hole. Okay. Kyron's best run of the afternoon easily. He's now at five for 18. 
just scored, got a pick, feeling good about ourselves. So I have no problem settling with a field goal if that's how it plays out. Of course, I want points. We know that. And Darren Waller, ooh, I was about to say, may just get his second touchdown of the first quarter. Didn't get the touchdown, but he did get it to within five yards of the goal line. We got two chances to get it in with Kyron here. Let's uh, at least start out inside zone and just see how that goes. Got a nice kind of little hole there I see developing, and I kind of just cut that the wrong way. So I did not do my man Kyron any favors on that one. Sorry, Kyron. <laughs> Coach is saying why stick, and for those who have never watched me before, I do rock with coach suggestions most of the time. I mean, unless they just call something completely stupid, which, to be honest, it's Madden, so that will happen. But I would say 85% of the time, coach did say why stick, and I may have Olave on the quick step drop, which I do. Okay, Chris Olave. I mean, hey, just want to give my man some touches. You know, it's like, it's like basketball. If you're struggling in basketball, sometimes all you got to do is see a free throw or a layup or something like that go in. And that can kind of boost that confidence. I'm trying to boost the confidence of Chris Olave because he is our wide receiver number one. But nonetheless, how about this start for the T-Birds, man? Going up 14-0 and the Dreadnoughts have only run one play and the first quarter is nearing a close. Also, for those who don't know, same as my St. Louis Sentinel series, this is all Madden difficulty. Sliders are on the default 50. Speaking of 50, there's big number 52, Zach Cunningham in there to uh, drop Devin Singletary for a loss. But sliders are at default 50. The only thing I did change was the injury. I bumped it uh, down slightly, I think to like 46 because there was just way too many injuries happening. And there's a nice pass from Bryce Young. First of the day completed to Olimide Zacchaeus, who's like their fifth string receiver. So I don't know why he got the target but uh d certainly did could be the last play here bryce young coming out eye for him not convinced it's gonna be a run though but it is gonna be a run and there's singletary not really able to get too many lanes going as dj reed the recipient of that pick a few plays ago was able to get in the backfield we'll see if bryce young snaps his ball he does not have to and we also have miles garrett on this team for those who don't know as well and bryce is not going to snap it so 14 to a goose egg here in the first quarter, been dominated by the Thunderbirds. Melbourne Dreadnoughts are a two and one team just like us, but so far, they ain't really looking like it. Now, I should be careful what I say because we know the Madden gods are always listening. And if they hear me, oh God, I could have had a sack on, on Bryce Young, but early breakup. What a recovery there by, who was that? Marcus Peters, no, Jordan Poyer. Number 21, that I really just saw my life flash before my eyes there because he was targeting Odell. Odell actually had it for a moment, but Jordan Poyer, who I believe just got released, got cut by the Bills in real life today in an effort to free up some cap space. So I think I saw that, if I saw that correctly. And if that's the case, Poyer will be a hot target on the free agency market no he's getting a little bit old but he's still making plays at a high level saw him get in on that one and uh the cleanup work was also done there as well by michael pierce we'll see if the dreadnoughts they are gonna elect to go for this so i am gonna send heavy pressure if they beat me on a pass play so be it but and it is there's bobby oh bobby wagner had him for a moment but again it's Jordan Poyer with the with the late breakup. Tell you what, man, Jordan Poyer, he and he makes plays like that in real life too. But that should have definitely been a catch from tight end Tyler Higby. I almost, as a matter of fact, sacked Bryce Young in the backfield, but I just missed him with the uh, Bobby Wagner there. But how about Jordan Poyer stepping up and making plays? Kind of in no man's land here. Third and 19 from deep in our own territory. Maybe we get Zay Jones breaking out. I'm going to have Kyron Williams block for me uh, just in case because that's probably the best option. And with a good ball from Love, that might actually get there. And he actually overshot him just a little bit as Patrick Sertan was in a great position to make a swat on the ball. So that's going to bring out A.J. Cole. I mean, look, it's all right. Can't score points on every drive as much as I would like to. 
That drive was kind of a stinker, and we're going to see what the Dreadnoughts have in store for us here on their, what is this, their third drive now? Hey, it's a nice start and a nice kick return for them. Going to press up the receivers again. They got a fullback in the eye for them, so I'm going to use her control on Yaya Diaby, but it's a play fake and nobody, and that's that was not even, that was not even a good pass from Bryce Young. Fullback Alec Engel did catch it, but it appeared that Bryce Young even kind of overshot him a little bit. So I'm not really sure uh, what's going on with Bryce. We know about his struggles in real life, but let's be honest, not even close to the best situation there in Carolina. Singletary is able to break the tackle of Jordan Poyer. And now Yaya Diaby, our rookie linebacker. Looks like he's going to be injured. About a little dime blitz here on Bryce Young. Hopefully we can uh, get somebody back there, get him rattled a little bit. There's Jalen Waddle. First time we called his name and... I got to be honest, I was kind of like not calling. I was kind of liking not calling his name. Jalen Waddle, we know how explosive he can be, especially there. And that's funny because the Dreadnoughts used to be the Miami Dolphins before the fantasy draft. And here's Jalen Waddle back on what used to be the Dolphins. No, it's a fumble. Loose. Oh, I think Bobby Wagner picked it up. Or Zach Cunningham picked it up. But that should be, I could not tell who got the first uh, hit there on Singletary, but that fumble appeared to be clean. Let's check it out here on replay and see who got their mitts on the good old pigskin. Poyer's in there. Was it Poyer that jarred that thing free? I'll tell you what, it was either Poyer or DJ Reed. And was Singletary down, though? That's the question. He actually, I uh, think that he was actually down, unfortunately. So probably going to get a booth review on this one. We do. That Maybe sucks. Yeah, unfortunately, on a booth review in Madden, I mean, if they're going to booth review a fumble, it almost always comes back. I don't think that I've ever seen a fumble get reviewed and not come back, as a matter of fact. So that might be the Dreadnought's first touchdown of the game. It is, and it's Tyler Higby. So this team was quiet through a quarter and a half here. But it's looking like they're trying to make some noise, and hopefully we can just respond with a good drive on the next drive. Probably going to go a little bit more to Kyron Williams on that one. Kyron Williams might just honestly be like the like our identity. We might just be a running first team with Kyron, and you know what? I'm fine with that because typically in Madden, I've been more pass-oriented in my uh, franchises. So having a franchise that focuses around the run – Actually sounds a little bit enticing. Trips to the left here. Ball on the 43. Second and four. It's going to be draw play to Kyron. So again, like I mentioned, I'm going to go with Kyron for as long as humanly possible. And he was one of the uh, surprises in the NFL. Of course, Puka Nakua on the Rams took all the rookie spotlight. But Kyron Williams was, he was a problem. He was a problem. I think that he has a chance to develop into one of the premier backs in the NFL. Just like I said, Jordan Love has a chance to develop into one of the premier quarterbacks in the NFL. Obviously hoping that they both become premier players in the SFL. Let me shut up and go to the left. See what kind of blocking Kyron gets. I mean, that one was doo-doo. Yes. But he did push the pile forward for two. Coach is calling it. Screenplay to Kyron. You see, I like to show you guys that I uh, do stick with coach suggestions here. And we're going to see what we can do, what can develop on the screen pass to the left. So got to get some good blockers downfield. And I mean, neither one of my two, my left tackle and my left guard, Joe Tooney. And I don't even know that might have been uh, Donovan Smith over there. Somebody they just had no interest in blocking. And because of that, because of that, now Kyron Williams is hurt. So Joe Tooney. Thank you so much. And whoever the heck else is over there as well. Trent Williams. Yeah, you just got our star running back injured. So good job, guys. I hope that you are happy with your performance or your lack thereof. One person who is happy is Logan Thomas, who's our tight end number two, picking up a nice first down, keeping the chains moving. So enter Kareem Hunt, six-year, seven-year pro out of Toledo. Let's see what he has. Now can I get a block? Okay, Kyle Youth check. Thank you for being interested in setting blocks for us. I greatly appreciate that. Hopefully we don't go to overtime today because you may not know the overtime rules, but at least you know how to block. So I am very happy about that. We're in scoring range here, guys. So let's go ahead and take care of business. Going to come out single back. Going to be a play fake 
with some crossers downfield. There's Zay Jones getting very close. Oh, and stopped mere shades away from the goal line. And defensive tackle there, Jonathan Jenkins is going to get injured, which is kind of nice because he has been causing a little bit of problems for us today and getting in the backfield and doing his thing. But we are within a shadow of the goal line. And let's get Kareem Hunt, his first touchdown of the season, walk in the park, stroll down Central Park on a nice breezy afternoon. Kareem Hunt going to put us back up by two scores. All right, time to start guessing pass here. I uh, wasn't doing that at first, but Bryce Young is now starting to put it together a bit. And that seemed to be a good decision there as we force a nice throw away from Young. Let's guess pass again. Why not? Worked well on the last play. Going to probably drop Leonard Floyd back here in coverage or at least have him watching that side. Nope, not going to matter. It's just Higby, who has definitely earned his keep today. He's been Bryce Young's favorite target. Got to send a little bit of pressure at him here, I feel like. And Miles Garrett, you should be winning every time. Miles does not have too many sacks on the season. And it's Higby again. So now all of a sudden, Melbourne looks like that 2-1 and one team that we saw pre-game. I think they were 84 overall. Now they're starting to look like that. Could be a block from Jason Verrett. So close. Love when you get that animation. Just mistimed it. Byron has broken ribs, too. Um, that same injury sidelined Graham Glasgow for a few weeks. So I don't think that Kyron will be returning in this one, which is highly unfortunate. Uh, because, again, as I mentioned, he is basically our identity. So this is going to be a great opportunity for Kareem Hunt to show what he's got. Didn't have much on that one. I can tell you that. Maybe Hunt on this Texas route or maybe Oh, I think he actually has it. Kareem, hold on to that. Okay, I see you, brother. Going to go ahead and call a timeout here. That was a huge gash up the middle by Kareem Hunt. Now we are primed up and trying to score. Coming out five wide, empty set. So got to be careful here. And there is, ooh, looking for the receiver, Mike Oxmall. And he was not able to get open on his route. Kind of like slants in this situation. Let's have Waller block. Really want to get uh, Olave or somebody involved so maybe just maybe that's a terrible pass from love well overshot felt like olave kind of got bumped on his route a little bit but nonetheless it was still not a very good ball from jordan love and now we are in a third and 10 with still 38 seconds left so that's a lot of time don't want to necessarily have to give it back to uh the dreadnoughts here Kareem hunt maybe up the middle or possibly could just be Valdez Scantling on the corner. Valdez dive. He actually gets in. Look at that. Or no, he doesn't. What am I doing? I called Spike. Okay. <laughs> I got so excited on that when I was mashing circle and went into Spike formation. That was almost disastrous. All right, we're reset. Now we're refocused. That, that was almost the... Uh, you were about to see a grown man rage. You were about to see that. Kareem Hunt. Need you to pick up a yard, brother. And Kareem slips through. Going to go back up by two scores. Highly, highly doubt the Dreadnoughts will be able to do anything in 10 seconds. And I'll tell you what, our offense is firing on all cylinders here. Even with the departure of Kyron Williams, we are still playing great. 28-14 on the scoreboard. And 28-14 will remain your score here. Passing yards pretty much even. I'm impressed the bounce back, the resiliency of Bryce Young. It was looking pretty bleak and pretty dismal for my man at the beginning of the first quarter, but he definitely turned it around. Virginia Beach Blues here, wide receiver Yeezy Fuentes, his team, and they are 3-0. They are cooking up 17-6 against the Omaha Pioneers. Albuquerque Armadillos, couple subscribers there, and they also have the lead against the Louisville Desperados. So really nice to see some of our subscriber teams with the leads, uh, Columbus Caps and Tokyo Golden Eagles. Nobody worth noting there. So back to our contest here now. Kareem Hunt, I feel like he's going to need some help because I'm not going to go away from the run just because Kyron is hurt. And then what did the Dreadnoughts do? It was really uh, the medium pass. So we're going to go defend medium pass and see if we can kind of put a stop to this uh, sudden spark that Bryce Young has seemed to find. Second half is upon us, and I just checked at halftime. The Bills did, in fact, release Jordan Poyer, and also they released Tredavious White, too. So a couple of uh, old but big-name free agents going to be out there on the market. 
They're curious to see who, and Devin Singletary, former Bill as well. So lots of uh, Bills and where we used to be the Bills. So lots of uh, Bills storylines going on here. Let's uh, guess pass Shade underneath here on second and six. Again, going to have Leonard Floyd just kind of sit back and maybe spy a little bit of the field here. Oh, my God. Wide open there. Tyler Higby is looking like prime freaking Jason or Travis Kelsey on this one. Cannot even believe it. Bryce Young kind of uh, starting to cook now. So got to watch, got to be careful. See if we can, we got to get some, we haven't got no pressure in this game. Higby, you're freaking deleted from the SFL. Tell you what though, the good thing about having a two touchdown lead, as long as we keep doing our thing on offense, it's not going to matter. That was a poorly timed screen. Looking for uh, Devin Singletary on that one. And it definitely did not materialize into anything. So now Bryce Young will revert back to I formation. So maybe probably going to be a run to Singletary, I would presume. And Zach Cunningham's right there. Oh, that one was a clean fumble, I do believe. But Frank Ragnow was able to pounce on that ball. That one was, that one was clean. That one could have been ours. So very unfortunate there. Let's uh, guess pass here. Shade inside. And LaMarcus Joyner going to be usering on him. So that's just going to be a catch and a completion there by Olimide Zacchaeus, who has also been a favorite target of Young in this one. Dreadnoughts are threatening here. Ball is on the two. They're coming out zero wide receivers. Then it's going to be a give to Alex Ingold. I don't know why. Madden logic, man. I feel like when teams get down to the one or two yard line, they love going in that zero wide receiver formation and I almost always go 60 out jacks blitz and it seems to work pretty well now this time we are we are stacking up the line trying to stop Singletary and we do and see look zero wide receivers this is a time where I go away from coach suggestions because 60 out jacks blitz is a, one of the best plays to call in this situation and there is Wagner gonna get to Young for the first time today almost mistimed it again but Bobby Wagner, free runner into the backfield. It was a play fake from Bryce Young, which was not the best call, was not the right call, in my opinion, to make in that situation. And Dicker, the kicker, is going to put points on the board. But it still remains an 11-point game, two-possession game for the T-Birds. Yeah, yeah, keep rubbing it in, showing me Kyron Williams' stats. He's not back in this game, so why don't you quit doing that? I would greatly, greatly appreciate it might be the Jordan Love show for the duration here. We'll see Kareem Hunt, you know, could still be a viable option. So first and 10 here, we are going to come out play fake and Waller our tight end. If Love, Love can find him, he does. Darren Waller having a superb gain, getting it all the way down to our 40. Maybe we uh, just go to Kareem here for a while because that one was a little bit too close for comfort. There's a nice hole. Kareem couldn't shake the defender, but still picking up a nice, solid gain of 10. So I like I like the production that we're seeing from uh, Mr. Hunt here. Now we're in prime position again. So it's first and 10. We're going to go back to this little crosser out of play action and just see who can get open. Zay Jones. Ooh, hoo -hoo. that was almost another great haul in by Jones, but Avante Maddox had pretty good coverage on that one. Ball is on the 16 here. We're gonna come out I form with a little play fake. I really like the uh, potential middle route there from Olave, but no, we'll just give it to Uves. He is gonna be dropped down there by Patrick Zertan after a gain of seven. So third and three, let's see what the coach is suggesting to me here. I mean, I guess I don't hate these calls, but we're gonna give it to Kareem Hunt on the lead, uh, fullback lead dive here. We made running it inside our focus, so time to see if that was indeed the right call. Can Kareem pick this up? I think he's gonna, and he does with ease. Let's just continue to give it to Hunt here. No need to do anything crazy. I mean, he'll pick up two, but if we do that again on the next play, guess what? It's a touchdown. But I'll tell you what, though. Rather than doing that, Coach is calling Y-Stick again. And even though Chris Olave is not getting a lot of yards, maybe a chance for him to get... His second touchdown of the afternoon, which he does with ease. So Chris Olave has as many uh, touchdowns as he has receptions, probably yards as well. He's probably got twos across the stat sheet. 
two catches for two yards and two touchdowns. But you know what? I will take that because that will put us up a commanding 35 to 17 lead against Melbourne. And I feel like uh, in our first game of the season, I think Garrett had two sacks. He may have even had a couple in the game after that. But ever since then, my man has not really done anything. And there's Singletary, Bobby Wagner, just with a vicious, vicious hit. Going to make it third and long as the third quarter is close to expiring. We're coming out pressure, but I am audibling this into zone here. And hopefully we can just play some good stout defense here. Don't want to give, oh, what the heck kind of pass was that from Bryce Young? That was atrocious. And I was just about to say, I don't want to give the Dreadnoughts any more life, even though we do have a pretty dominating lead. And that was a nice three and out. And we're going to get the ball back as the third quarter expires. And really... This is our game to lose, man. We, I mean, we have, this is our game to lose. Patrick Peterson, probably doing a little bit too much with him in his old age. Don't want to cause a fumble or anything like that. And it would appear that the coach, and I agree with this, just kind of going into chew clock mode here. Don't need to do anything dumb. Right now, our biggest foe is Father Time, not even the Dreadnoughts. So we just want to eliminate Father Time from this game as much as possible. Nice hole there from Hunt. He picks up four, and we get the ball to the 40. Now, I am going to play conservative, but not like hyper conservative because there's still a lot of time left. So let's go uh, screen pass to Hunt. That wind up with something real from Jordan Love, and we get dropped there in the backfield by Viliami Fioko. And that was about the last thing that I really wanted to happen. I mean, we can't just, I'm not just going to, I'm not just going to not try to get this right. Like we're going to still try to pick this up. I'm not going to go verticals or anything like that, but definitely going to be trying to pick this up. And I think Olave may just be the man for the job. He was momentarily, but that was a nice bat down for Kyle Duggar. And for the second time today, we are going to see AJ Cole. And still give the Dreadnoughts a tiny, tiny shred of hope. Still going to be a large hill to climb for them, but they're not uh, mathematically eliminated from this one yet. How about a little dime blitz here on a Wednesday afternoon? Yes, it is Wednesday afternoon as I record this. Maybe got to watch uh, our friend there, Tyler Higby. It's going to be a nice little check down to Devin Singletary. DJ Reed drives him backwards, but it was a gain of seven. So interesting to see, you know, there's... A lot of score to make up and not a whole heck of a lot of time to do it. Interesting to see if uh, the Dreadnoughts here decide to go into just some dink and dunk. Little check downs downfield. Um, that one. Did he catch that? Huh? Oh my God. Odell Beckham with his signature aggressive catch. Just absolutely mossed us. I thought we had, I mean, it was a good route. He definitely burned us on the route, right? But. I thought that with the recovery there from DJ Reed that we would at least be able to bat that ball out. Twas not the case. And look, they want me to go. I hate Madden sometimes, man. Why would I go prevent? Ball's on the 28-yard line, and there's still seven minutes to go. Like, why Why would I just drop out into prevent defense? Now, I am going to definitely be, you know, not as aggressive as I would be if this was the first quarter. But I'm not going to just go prevent. Like, that just doesn't make any sense to me at all. And it's what Madden suggests all the time. Um, we're going to press up these receivers here because they got a lot of separation. And we are very, very close to the goal line. Um, so that is going to be a nice breakup. Jalen Waddle was right there, but it was a nice breakup for Marcus Peters. Going pretty much uh, press man here. You know, pretty much press man. And we might have just got cooked on that one. Is that our old buddy Higby? It is. <laughs> I mean, who is this guy? I, I know who Tyler Higby is. He's an eight-year pro out of Western Kentucky. This much I know. My question is why is he's not playing like Tyler Higby? And this one just got a little more interesting. Back to an 11-point game. More inside runs to Hunt. Need a, oh, nice block from check there. Darren Waller gets injured. That's not good. Hopefully he comes down. Looks like it's a little ankle sprain. Hopefully it's just something that they can uh, pop back into place and, you know, pat him on the butt, tell him get back out there. 
Don't know why I needed to include the pat on the butt part, but I did. And one yard, can Kareem Hunt pick this up? And we made inside run our focus. One would have to believe that he could. Hunt powering forward, surging ahead. He's actually now over the half century mark with two touchdowns. So playing good in the absence of his brother, Kyron Williams. And Darren Waller won't come back. So I guess uh, we're not going to be getting that pat on the ass that we talked about earlier. Third and seven, maybe Hunter Valda Scantling on these little safe routes here, um, which I think it absolutely is. But Love had just a little pressure and it was out of the reach of Hunt. We are going to have to punt the ball back to the Dreadnoughts. So this one far from over. I feel like uh, this game was well within our grasp. And we just haven't been able to move the ball too much in the second half. And that's going to also be a touchback. Can we hold on for 347? That is the million dollar question. But now they are going into this hurry up, which I hate. Hate when teams do that. I may even just want to eventually call a timeout here or something because every time teams do this, going to hurry up like this, I get cooked. But that time, oh, it is Marcus Peters. Thought he dropped the pick there for a minute, but he did not. That should be his second or third pick on the season. And I think we can safely say, GG Thunderbirds. What a play from the savvy veteran Marcus Peters out of Washington. And that one should just about lock this thing up. Still time left, but that was a dagger in the heart of Bryce Young and these tread knots for sure. Now we just got to make sure we don't turn the ball over and pick up uh, maybe a first down or two. I just need you to pick up one yard, Kareem. Can you do it, Kareem? Fuck yeah! Kareem does. Dreadnoughts are going to start spending their timeouts, and I am perfectly fine with that because now the game should pretty much be out of reach. One first down effectively ends it. Thought Hunt was going to get there for a moment. He did not. But I think this one still is a wrap. And that will do it. 35-24 is your score. How about the offense for the Thunderbirds? Give those guys a round of applause. Mike McDaniel throws his Gatorade cup. Hey, man, don't be littering on our field. What are you doing? I'm trying to keep it clean here in Toronto. Mike, I might have to have you fined for that. I have to get Thunderbird security out here to, uh, to tussle with you. But Bryce Young, I mean, look, the yards are going to look good. Yes, 321. But he had two picks. Jordan Love played a clean game and a respectable 249. And that is why we won the game. Kyron, before he exited, was having a pretty good game. But Kareem Hunt did step up with 88 yards and two touchdowns. Devin Singletary never really got it going. This guy, uh, I hate him. Tyler Higby made my blood pressure go up. Darren Waller had a great game, but he got injured randomly. Olimide Zacchaeus was getting involved. And uh, Chris Olave, two catches, four yards. And two touchdowns. Very Olave-like stats. Had that one sack from Bobby Wagner and two key picks from DJ Reed and Marcus Peters. And that is going to improve your Toronto Thunderbirds to 3-1, and one, playing really good on the season. Now, let's take a look at our subscribers, box scores for some of their games, and see how you guys did here in week number four. Canton Condors did drop to the Memphis River Hogs here. So we'll take a look at our safety duo first and see if they were able to uh, make any sort of impact in this game. Eli Sokowitz had six total tackles. Doesn't look like any picks or any forced fumbles or anything like that. So uh, nothing too crazy there. And then Mike Collins, three tackles. So unfortunately, no picks or anything from our safeties. But let's be honest, that's a pretty formidable safety duo. So I am sure that they will make an impact in the games to come. And then our new subscriber here, or new player, at least on the SFL, Braden Keys made a pretty solid impact. Five catches for 47 yards. And San Juan Tigers just got smoked by the OKC Antlers. So I am very, very sorry, all my uh, Tiger subscribers here. Let's see uh, what everybody did, though. Nick Stoyer, nice game. Four for 53. You love to see him getting involved. Dalton Kincaid who I did make the uh, starting. Where is my new subscriber? St. James didn't get any catches. I did definitely order the depth chart for the Tigers. And I also worked you into a bunch of sets. So I guess it just wasn't your day, but no worries. I'm sure next game will definitely be better. 
And then we have a new subscriber cornerback, Dior Love, who did have eight tackles. Again, no picks, no forced fumbles, nothing like that. But eight tackles, still a pretty solid stat line. Armadillos also took the L in Louisville. So subscribers, teams taking uh, taking some uh, L's here in this episode. But that's all right. Check on our tight end, Bjorn Jeffrey. One catch for nine yards. So not the best stat line, but... Hey, you got Geno Smith throwing the ball to you, so maybe uh, get you, if a subscriber wants to join the Armadillos as a, cor a quarterback, let me know, and I could possibly add you. And then Arturo Esquivel, two tackles, one TFL, so that is nice to see. No sacks or fumbles, but a big TFL. Always love to see that on the stat sheet. Lumberjacks also fell to the Bisons, so we may be first place in our division now. Not 100% sure, but we will certainly check on that and checking on our subscriber quarterback here michael yakin he kind of cooled off he had two back-to-back -back 300 plus games in the last couple episodes he kind of cooled off a little bit 240 through the air one touchdown and one pick as well not a you know terrible stat line but definitely not what we have grown accustomed to but james briner the tight end five for 40 and he was the recipient of that lone touchdown thrown by Michael Yakin. So love to see the subscriber to subscriber hookup on the tutties. Hopefully see a lot more of those in the weeks to come. Okay, the Black Knights dominated the Anchorage Snowhawks. So maybe our new brother combination, uh, Jaden Hayes. I mean, two picks. Don't like to see that sub 200. Don't like to see that, but two touchdowns. Hey, what wins the game guys? Points. You know, that's true. And he did not target his brother, Caleb Hayes, on any of those touchdowns, but still three catches for 28. So nice to see the brothers hooking up for some yards and obviously getting a huge 15 point win. I'll tell you what, man, Yeezy Fuentes and his blues just continue to be probably the best team in the SFL. 4-0 now, I believe, on the season in a dominating 31-6 victory. They do got Josh Allen as their quarterback. Let's see what uh, Mr. Fuentes did. He caught a touchdown. Let's freaking go. I think that might be Yeezy's first touchdown on the campaign. Two for 30, but that lone touchdown from Josh Allen. Love to freaking see it. Jamrocks, unfortunately, continue to be winless on the season, but let's check out and see what uh, Jesse Buzo Jr. did. He had 242 touchdown and a pick. So, you know, again, nothing crazy, but a respectable, respectable stat line indeed. And uh, it was just Trevor Lawrence and the Elks of Chicago. Unfortunately, just outdueled him a little bit. But Jesse, I'm sure you will get your first dub here very, very soon. Our punter, Jack Mavros and his Honolulu Dragons also took the L against the Vancouver Huskies. I guess one good thing, if you're a punter, uh, you know, you took an L, that means you're probably punting the ball a lot. He punted the ball twice and good average yards per punt, though, 55.5. Both of those punts were touchbacks, but he had a long of 60, which is very respectable as a punter. So good job punting the ball, Jack. Linebacker Michael Briner and the Oakland Wizards do get the win over the San Diego Voyagers. And the question is, what type of impact did my man play in this game here? Looking for him on the stat sheet. There he is. Michael, he did not have any tackles, but he did have one pass deflection. So that means at least he is playing sets. So Michael, I'm sure I would like to believe that that one pass deflection you had was a big one and that helped elevate your team to a victory. Check on some QBs now. New subscriber QBs in the league. Rocky D. Bernardo, Bernardo and his Sacramento Sentinels did get the victory here over the St. Louis Bulls. I mean, a buck 98 with one touchdown, not... Anything that's going to knock your socks off. It looks like Ezekiel Elliott was kind of a uh, work. And Joshua Kelly were workhorses in that one. And you slung your lone touchdown pass to running back Joshua Kelly. But hey, a win is a win. Good job getting the victory. Ooh, and our division rival Brooklyn Nighthawks took a big L who I believe the San Antonio Voyagers are also undefeated as well. Uh, Derek Derigosa. 150 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Good QB rating. Um, Lamar Jackson just absolutely played out of his mind. That is the problem there. Uh, you did target Michael Thomas a lot, which I don't blame you. 
and Colby Parkinson maybe look to get uh, Jamar Chase involved a little bit more. He claims he's always open. His words, not mine. Uh, but I'm sure you will bounce back in your next outing. Just hopefully not when you play us. And then last but not least, the team that we play next episode, Orlando Orbits. I'm going to check on the uh, stats here of Johnny Waters, the new running back in town. He, and you know what? This is awesome. It looks like he's getting more carries than Jonathan Taylor, which I did not. I did put him, Johnny U, as running back number two. But you did shoulder most of the carries. And you got a touchdown for your efforts. You had two broken tackles, averaged 4.3 yards per carry. And you had 14 carries for 60 yards. So interesting to see what uh, Johnny is going to do against us in the next episode. That should be a fun one. So make sure that uh, you guys tune into that. But hey, nice victory from us. Hope you guys are enjoying the series so far. We are now first place in the AFC East taking on the Orlando Orbits in the next episode. And then also the Brooklyn Nighthawks in week seven. So Derek Daragosa, we are going to see you in that one. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.